Sovereign Citizens, also known as Sovereign Citizens Movement, is a loosely organized and diverse anti-government movement that emerged in the United States. Individuals who identify as sovereign citizens typically hold a set of beliefs and theories that challenge the legitimacy and authority of the government and reject its laws, regulations, and institutions. Good afternoon, Your Honor. David Fain here on behalf of the plaintiff. Sir, your name? Sorry, Judge. Fellas, name. All right. All right. This is the date for non jury trials, and this is a non payment of rent case. How much is the plaintiff claim? Is owing. The total balance at this time is $3,320.17 plus court costs of $161. 3, I'm sorry, $3,320.17. All right. Hey, Yana, sir, I... sir, of that amount, is there any that you believe that you owe? No. You were going to say something. I was going to ask to Jack what he was about to say as far as about the numbers. About saying what I owe, but you already answered the question. I mean, ask me the question. And Mr. Break down that amount if you want me to, Your Honor. Pardon? I can break down the amount if you'd like me to. Um, just one moment. We'll get to that. Um, sir, can I ask you, um, I received the documents from you. Is there... Is there a reason why you don't think you owe that amount? Because it's already been paid, Your Honor. Um, far as uh, reporting adverse information about a concern Act 211 of 1989, um, Vanessa Place is trying to help me liable as the co-signer when I have an uh, interest and a signature and I'm a natural person. So they're trying okay, to Okay, so Okay, so let me ask you this. Okay. Um just so that we I have the background on. You you reside in this unit that's at um I think 315B right. at 1000. You you reside there. Um, that's my place of vote. Well, you, you live there, right? Depends what you're talking about. I'm, I'm coming, I'm acting as a consumer. So, um, as far as like my, um, and they're on special appearance and my eighth, my estate stays there. But as far as a natural man, I don't have no um, place. As far as my estate and my. Okay. So when. Whoever is in this courtroom leaves here to go what, to what they would call home. Where does this person that's sitting here go? To my place of abode, Your Honor. Happy Which day. is where? A plaintiff's place. Okay. At the 315B. Correct. All right. That's what I need to know. Okay. Is there a, do you have a ledger? And I'll give Mr. Lane a copy also. Thank you. And Mr. Fantero, this would be your witness, is yes. that correct? Okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we have her and Mr. Lane sworn in, please? Thank you. Yeah, one Yeah. I do. Raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Governor, could I give you a real quick context on that? Please? Yes, please. Um, we had a previous case last summer where Mr. Lane received Sarah funds. Um, and when we had the, when we had the, uh, I have a copy, I have a case number, I have a copy of the unsigned copy of the COD. Um, that was entered on September 9th. SOS paid his rent through September and it left a small balance of, uh, I think about $119, which, which we waived. So the balance, even though it doesn't show it on there because we didn't actually get the SOS check till sometime later, his rent at the end of September was zero. So the total balance that's on there is five months of rent at 530, uh, water and sewer bills, electric bills. There's not even any late fees. And then there's 161 in court costs. So I just want to clarify that, in fact, it, none of this goes back past September 30th. In fact, if you, I don't know if you remember, we actually, when we had the previous case, Mr. Lane had sued Peninsula Place seeking the return of all money he paid forever. And he denied that he owed money, but simultaneously applied for Sarah. And he denied he applied for Sarah. You verified with probably Aaron at the time that he had applied for Sarah. He ended up getting Sarah funds. He would not sign the COD. And then you basically gave him a choice. I'll enter the COD or we'll have a trial and I'll give you a judgment. But sounds like he's raising some of the same stuff now that he attempted to raise. Donna, free speak. Go ahead, sir. So Yana, when I applied for, so at first I didn't know what I was applying for. So when I applied for Sarah funding, I ended up giving my principal information, which is was, was my name, my date of birth, and my social security. Social security. Basically, I'm here today saying that I gave my principal to Peninsula Place, and I've never received any center consideration. Your Honor, I don't understand what that means. I have a lease here that is between Peninsula Place and Trellis Lane. It's not between the estate of Trellis Lane. It's not between, it's not with, I think I saw somewhere here a something that he recorded with the state of Michigan. Um, Certificate of assumed name, TTL LLC. The lease is with the name is with Trellis Lane, who is a, is a person. And Your Honor, I took control of my name, so that means all interest and consideration will be coming out to me. Okay, let me. Well, all right. I I again, I don't know what that means. However, are you Trellis Lane? Um, That's a yes or no. Because I'll tell you, if you are, mm -hmm. then we'll go ahead with the trial. If you're not Trellis Lane, then I'm going to give them a judgment by default because Trellis Lane hasn't shown. Um, I'm, I'm here on special appearance. No, you can't do that. You are not an attorney at law because you can't appear for somebody else. So my question is, and I'll ask it again, are you Trellis Lane? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. So, Mr. Lane, October of 2022. Mm -hmm. Did you pay rent to the landlord? 
Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and how did you pay that? I'm paying with with my credits that's on file. So I sent instructions back in May, basically to get my account zero every month. You do what? I, I sent instructions back in May, then I sent another one to December to the CEO. The CEO of what? Uh, American Campus Communities. Saying right. So he's seen my email, so he's aware of what's going on. Basically, like I say, I'm looking for consideration. I have not been getting no consideration, no adequate consideration. Well, you get adequate consideration for the contract and any payment by virtue of the fact that you have a residence. So I don't think consideration is even an issue. Well, well yeah, I have several questions. Well, you can go ahead and ask your questions, but I don't know. Let me just ask this. October 2022. How did you pay your rent? I pay with my endorse. I took the bill. I did you give them cash? They don't have. Um, we being whom? I'm saying we, it's a credit system, Your Honor. It's a what? It's a credit system. We don't. We don't. So, so who's in charge of this credit system? So who's in charge? Surely. I mean, we, didn't have, we haven't had money since 1933, the marriage and bacon. We being whom? Who, who are you talking about when you say we haven't had money? Who is we? As far as like the United States haven't had money since 19... 19- oh, they definitely have. And I spent my share. So I don't know. You, you're saying you gave them credit. Yes. In what form did you give them credit in the month of October 2022? Then credit, I took the bill, which they give me a bill every month, which is a statement. I take the statement. If you want to, I can show you what yeah, I'm doing. I know what he's referring to. Can I show you? Yeah. I'll show him and then. I got copies for him. Here's, here's, here's what I, here's what he's getting, Your Honor. We have a third party billing company. Um, called Z, uh, Zigo. And so what they do is every month they bill uh, the, the utilities. So he gets this bill, and then you'll see at the bottom what he writes is pay to the order of Peninsula Place. And so what he's taken, so for, the, for example, the top one says pay to the order of Peninsula Place 662.12. That amount is his monthly rent plus the 123.12 in utilities that are at the top. There's three of these that I've attacked. So what he does is he cuts off the bottom and he mails that in as with instructions to pay to the order of Peninsula Place as if that's a check. I don't have this marked as plaintiff's exhibit and two. The ledger being one. But Mr. Lane, you have a copy of what I've marked as plaintiff's exhibit two. Is what Mr. Fantera described, is that correct? Is that what you do? Yes, I'm I'm ex- I'm accepting the credits that's given to me and I'm transferring to that. Who's giving you this credit? They, they who? So the Nessa place, they're basically there. So in the in the beginning, when I signed up with Peninsula Place, I gave my credit information. So those payments are supposed to come to me as credit. So what, what payments? The payments that's coming every month. 
So, so those payments, they're trying to hold me liable for it. And I'm taking the credits that I'm receiving and dishing it back to them. To Peninsula. I, I have a, who's giving you credit? You said who's giving me credit? Yeah. I, I have credit, Your Honor. I have a security interest. In what? In this so-called contract with Peninsula Place. Okay. But who's giving you credit? Young man, you keep using these terms, payment, credit, and it seems to me as I'm listening to you that you're using them improperly. So my question is, have you paid anything to the plaintiff in U.S. dollars or anything that evidences U.S. dollars? No, I haven't paid in U.S. dollars. But or anything evidencing U.S. dollars, yeah. like a check, credit card, anything like that. So this is... No, that's a yes or no. Can you repeat the question, Yana? Have you... Uh, uh, let me just break it apart so we get it real clear. Yeah. Have you paid for the months of October 2022, November 2022, December 2022, January 2023, or February of 2023? Have you paid to anything to Peninsular Place in U.S. dollars? No, Your Honor. Have you paid anything to them that is evidence? Of an account which holds U.S. dollars. Yes, Your Honor. What? And what account is it attached to? You better be careful about answering my question. Because I, if you're telling me that you gave them or paid them something that evidences an account that can access U.S. dollars, show it to me. You said that's access to U.S. dollars? Right here. What is that? What, what Mr. Frantera just gave? Yes. How does that access U.S. dollars? Because, Your Honor, this account, I'm the holder and I have interest. Then show me the balance on that account. The, they show you the balance? Yep. Just show you the balance. No, you haven't shown me anything. Show me the balance on the account. If you give somebody something that evidences that they can access U.S. dollars, then there is a balance on that account in terms of what you're giving them. Much as if somebody gave a check to them, they would be able to show the account for which they can then present that check and receive U.S. dollars. Show me that account, Mr. Lane. Like I said, uh, I don't know what, what else you're asking for. This is the no, you know exactly what I'm asking for. You're asking for something that's coming out. Something that evidences that by that piece of paper that you've given them, that they can access U.S. dollars. Okay. I don't have any other account besides this, Your Honor. You don't have any what? I said I don't have any other evidence besides this right here. That does not show me that they can access U.S. dollars. Okay. Where would they take that to, in your mind? Where would they take that to to access the United States dollar? Put it on the ledger. Where would they take it to to access U.S. dollars? So, okay. So, Your Honor, so I got a 
Well, got a question. Are as landlord and tenant tenant relations uh, relationships? It's sitting here. I'll try to answer your question as soon as you answer mine. Okay. Where would they take it to access U.S. dollars? They would take it and take the check and put it on a ledger with my credit. Because if I owe something, Your Honor, it would be in the negative balance. How can I pay something that's in a positive balance? How how can you don't have a positive balance? This is you a, have given them a piece of paper that you yourself just said is a check. So where would they take that to access your account? So you receive U.S. dollars. Your Honor, they're acting in dishonor. They're taking it. And they never said anything about or object to it. So it was off there. Off oh, they're objecting now, certainly. Where would they take it, Mr. Lang? So where would they take it? I mean, as far as we got to uh, we have they have a security deposit deposition bond. So they have it in a financial institution. What financial institution I'm not would sure. they take it to to get cash from your check, as you call it, that would then be debited from your account? Where would they take it? So debited. So so what about the credit, Shana? I don't see a credit. On this paper, it says credit payments and credits. That's not what it means, but to the extent it says that. You have no credit. Where would they take it to get U.S. dollars? Where would they take it? They would take it out of my trust, Your Honor. Out of your trust? Yes. Where is this trust located? Oh, I have a trust in the Okay, let's say we all do. I'm not accepting your premise, but let's say we all do. Where is your trust located? I'm not sure where it's located, Your Honor. But so if they wanted U.S. dollars for this thing you purport to be a check, you can't tell them where to take it. In the Treasury. Which Treasury? The Treasury. Oh, so they have to go to the U.S. Treasury with this thing that purports to be a check. Really? They were pulling from the Treasury. That's why they asked for my information. Who is pulling from the Treasury? Peninsula Flex, Your Honor. So Peninsula Place is pulling from the U.S. Treasury. I got the account attached to my name with my social and my information. So oh, they're pulling from the U.S. Treasury because of that? Say that again. So because of that, they're pulling from the U.S. Treasury? I mean, they're charging an account. They got, so this account has my information tied into it, which is, which is showing that it's already prepaid. So what they're trying to do is make me, Peninsula is trying to make me repay You've never paid anything. So they're not trying to make you repay. They're trying to make you pay. Honor, so how did we get here if I never provide if I if I provided my information to Peninsula Place? We got here because you have never provided them anything. Okay. To pay on this account in US dollars or anything evidencing US dollars. That's how we're here. For five months. You haven't done that. Okay. So in the in the, um, in the contract, it says payment. We didn't then specify what type of payment. I'm asking you, have you paid them in US dollars? No, they have no credit. But you have no credit. Yeah, this is evident. In order, hold on. Okay. In order to pay in credit, if you will, 
You must have something that evidences a balance on that credit. I've already asked you once. Why not? I'll ask you again. Show me something that evidences the credit. That shows the credit? This birth certificate and a social security number showing my line of credit that I applied. So how much is in that line of credit? You say how much is in the line of credit? Sure. If you got a line of credit, it's got to have a value. So how much is in it? I believe everybody has a billion dollars. I didn't ask in everybody. I'm asking how much is in your line of credit? Well, with Peninsula Place, whatever. No, I'm asking you. You're saying that your birth certificate and the social security, you have a line of credit. I don't believe that to be the case, but what the heck? Let's ask you, how much is then in your line of credit? I'm not sure. So if you're not sure how much is in there, and you give them this thing that evidences, as you're saying, let's just take this one month of $662.12, you don't know if that can be subtracted from that credit you supposedly have. I'm, a, I'm believing at least a billion dollars worth of credit. Oh, you have a billion dollars worth of credit. We all have credit. Well, I'm not worried at this point about anybody else's credit. I'm worried about yours. You're saying you have a billion dollars. But you have nothing that shows me that you have a billion dollars worth of credit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lane, plaintiff is claiming that you owe them $3,320.17. Tell me every reason why I should not give them a judgment for that amount. That's going against the um, Michigan Consumer Protection Act. What particular provision are you claiming of the Michigan Consumer Protection Act? Enter into a consumer transaction in which the consumer waives or purports to waive right benefit or immunity provided by law, um, by law unless a waiver is clearly state and the consumer has specified consent to it. I never gave no consent. What have they asked you to waive? You said, where they asked me to waive? Mm -hmm. My rights. To as what? A consumer. As a and consumer of what? You said a consumer of what? Yeah. Of this contract? What rights did they ask you to waive? My interest. What interest? I have an interest in this, in this so-called contract. Oh, you do? You also have certain obligations under that contract. So I have obligations. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like payment. Okay. According to... Like I say, landlord and tenant relationship. Um, pay the landlord for all the rent arranged of the rental agreement. That's basically what I have the security deposit for. No, your security deposit is not under Michigan law for that reason. What is for the honor? That's what it says security deposit permissible uses. I mean, there is no security deposit under this lease. They do not require a security deposit. It's zero. Okay. Even worse. I don't know which, which. You don't have a security deposit. Your security deposit is zero. You did not pay a security deposit when you moved in. This client does not require you, you security. You say move in. All this is from where? And even if you had one, the Security Deposit Act, you can't apply it. Sorry. So what other reason do you have why you don't owe this money? 
uh, what other reason. Yeah, you told me Landlord-Tenant Relationship Act, which you haven't pointed to a particular provision. You talked about a security deposit, of which you have none, so that can't be a reason. I don't know, and you haven't pointed to anything under the Landlord-Tenant Relationship Act that would even be applicable in this particular case regarding the monies that you owe. You cited the Michigan Consumer Protection Act. There's been no benefit that they've denied you, no interest that they've denied you. So that can't apply. Give me some anything else as to why you don't know this. Anything else why I don't know this? I don't understand what else that you're looking for. Like I said, I want you to tell me every reason why I should not say and give them a judgment for this, the $3,320.17 plus their cost. So, Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry, can you do that again? Which part? You're saying, so how is this not like a contract of adhesion that is more beneficial to Vanessa Lopez? I don't know what that meant. Explain what you're trying to say to me. So, it's two parties, and I consider the, the weaker part. So, they wrote this contract, and all in the benefit for them. So, where did I have any say-so in this contract? Well, you had the big say-so of no. You didn't have to sign it. So ain't that false and misleading? They ain't always never know. No, that's not false and misleading. It's supposed they to be didn't, disclosure. They didn't force you to sign it. You signed it. So I'm signing it. So is this a loan that I'm getting from Peninsula Place? No, you are not getting a loan from Peninsula Place. So, you are renting an apartment. Correct. In consideration for the use of that apartment, which belongs to Peninsula Place, you're to pay them rent. You haven't for the last five months. Actually, you didn't pay it before then because Sarah paid it, but you haven't paid rent for the last five months. Yeah, no, all bills are prepaid. No, they're not. Okay. Your bill is not prepaid. Like I say, it's in the positive balance. If I owe anything, it will be in the negative. I don't even know what that means because your positive versus negative is different than anybody else I've ever come across. You said my positive is yes. Right now you're in the negative of about thirty three hundred twenty dollars and seventeen cents. Yana, when I log into my per portal, it shows a positive balance. I can't 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 owe something in a positive balance. It's just if I log into my app on my mobile device. To look at my bank account, it's in a positive balance. Your bank account. Yes, this is a positive balance. If I follow anything, it will be. So you have the money. So you have $3,320.17. Yes, I'm giving an example. What's giving an example? If I owe anything, it would be in the negative. I don't know what that means. You so, don't have a credit on this account. You owe them thirty three twenty seventy. Uh, if I don't have a credit, Your Honor, how how do they make up an account number with all my information? I had to give them something. Yeah, you gave them your information. You, the only thing you haven't done is give them money. So, in other words, you're telling me that I have to repay them, which is already paid. You never paid it. No matter how many times you keep saying it, you never paid it. Like I said, John. You've never paid anything since October. I have federal questions. You have federal questions. Okay, well, you can take those up where they'll hear those. I don't know what federal questions you have because every state question that you attempted to try to raise falls flat on its face. There's no violation of the Michigan Consumer Protection Act. There's no violation of the Truth and Renting Act. 
you haven't paid anything. You won't show me an account where that even evidences that you had the money. You haven't paid it. So this account right here doesn't show my name, Your Honor. You don't have an account. If you're talking about a financial account, you don't have an account. You haven't shown me one. I've asked you for it. You haven't shown it to me. Like I said, the account is right here, Your Honor. That's not your account. So who account is it? It, it has my name on it. You keep calling it an account. It is not an account. You'll have a lot of things that will have your name on them. They aren't your account. They're tied into with me. And I have an interest. <laughs> okay. You can have an interest. You can have all of that. You have nothing where they could go and get cash. Nothing where they could go and get anything that would even remotely represent payment on this account. And you haven't done so for the last five months. So, yeah, on this ledger, it say payments credit. Look, I'm not going to sit up there and go back and forth with you on that. I asked you just plain out. Tell me every reason why you don't think you owe this money. So, Your Honor, I'm a responsible, responsible party, and I gave my endorsements. They accepted. I'm demanding pay. They never gave me pay. Like I said, and my birth certificate has the Social Security number showing that I am. Do you have a bank account? A bank account? What What does the bank account have to do with? Because it? that's usually how people pay for their rent. Your Honor, all I'm doing is enforcing my rights. I'm not sure which rights you think you're enforcing. Because I haven't heard one yet. Is there any other reason you believe that you don't owe this 33 20 17 that you have not already stated to me? Any other reason? I don't have any other reason besides, like I say, Your Honor, sorry, prepaid. And they're trying to make me pay twice, acting in dishonor, accepting and not returning, not saying anything of it. They're not accepting. So they've been taking it ever since I started, what, maybe March last year? Ma'am, your name is. Jane, full name? Jane Hogan. Miss Hogan. And you, what is your position with Penn I'm the property general manager. Okay. And you would be familiar with the books and ledger regarding this particular this particular unit? Yes. You had an opportunity to review that prior to coming to court today. Yes. Is it true that $3,320.17 is the balance that's owed on this account? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, is there any other reason why you don't think you owe that money? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because I'm about ready to rule. Rule, I thought I was supposed to get a, a jury trial. No. I set this for trial sometime back in December, actually. So, my. Are you waving if I'm for a non jury trial? Oh. Sir, you gave no objection, nor requested a jury trial. So, yeah, I gave no objection. Okay. When I set the date on December 23rd, you get there was no objection to that. And because you had not requested a jury trial. 
at any given point. So I'm not even going to get into that. You waived that, right? Any other reason why you don't think you owe the money that's been testified to, sir? Oh, your honor. All right. Mr. Pantera, you forego closing argument. Yes, your honor. All right. Is there anything else you want to say to the court? So I have no questions on the uh, appeal. Uh, all right, court. Yeah. As soon as I enter my judgment, you'll be able to appeal all you want. If you can perfect it. So the court, having heard the testimony in this case, the court would find that plaintiff has sustained their burden of showing that the defendant owes $3,320.17 in outstanding rent and charges on this account. And the court would uh, order a judgment to the plaintiff in that amount plus its cost. That would constitute then the redemption amount on this um, premises. The defendant would have 10 days to pay that. It means he would have to pay that by February 24th or a writ of restitution or order of eviction may issue. I will sign a judgment. Should I show it to Mr. Laupin? Show it to him if you'd like, or you can present judgment it to the court. I've issued my judgment. The court has signed that judgment. Thank you. This video has been produced under fair use. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing.